Hi, in this video, I will be discussing about disturbances in number of teeth. Okay, so basically what are the disturbances in number of teeth like oligodontia, like hypodontia, anodontia and supernumerary teeth. I will be discussing all of these plus I will be, I'll be telling you the important questions which may appear from this topic. Okay, some important terminology, some important genes which are associated with these abnormalities. I will be telling you all of those. So now we start with anodontia first. See, anodontia is what? Anodontia is absence. It is congenital absence of teeth. Okay. So it can be the total anodontia or partial anodontia. Now you should know all of these like total. In total what happens? All teeth are missing. Now what conditions are there in total anodontia? Hereditary ectodermal dysplasia is the condition where total anodontia is seen. You should know these conditions. These conditions are very important. So you should know these. And next one is induced or false anodontia. Now it is induced. It is induced means extraction. Extraction of all teeth is done. Then induced or false anodontia is there. And pseudo anodontia is there when multiple unerupted teeth are present in the oral cavity. Then it is called as pseudo anodontia. Now you should be familiar with all these terms. Okay. You should be familiar with all these terms like what is induced anodontia, what is pseudo anodontia. Now we will see partial anodontia. See partial anodontia. These are hypodontia and oligodontia. Now this is very important as, as many people get confused like hypo and oligo are the same. But these are not the same. These are different. Hypo is when more than one tooth when more than one tooth are missing, then it is hypodontia, okay. But it is called oligodontia when more than six teeth are absent. When more than six teeth are absent, then it is called oligodontia. Now, these terms are very important, okay. You should be able to differentiate between oligo and hypodontia. Most commonly involved teeth, most commonly involved teeth in this partial endodontia, these are third molar, maxillary lateral incisors. Maxillary or mandibular second premolars. Okay. So, generally in case of partial endodontia, these teeth are missing. Now, frequency, frequency is around 1.6 to 9.6%. This is frequency of partial endodontia and this partial endodontia is not including the third molar. Now, we will see some genes associated with hypodontia and oligodontia. Okay. So, these are very important. You may be asked some genes. So, see first one MSX1 and TGF alpha, hypodontia and oligodontia, okay, responsible for hypodontia and oligodontia. AX1 and 2, this is responsible for hypodontia plus predisposition to colorectal cancer. Now, these are very important, these Hox genes. Hox genes are very important. You should know these like Hox D13, that is responsible for polysyndactyly. And Hox A13 that is responsible for hand, foot, and genital syndrome. So these genes you should know. Any direct question can be there from genes. Now see these Pax genes. Out of these, very important, the most important one is Pax9. Pax9. Pax9 missing, then it leads to oligodontia. Okay. Pax9 gene, you all know that is uh, that is responsible for localization of tooth germs. So if it is missing, then oligodontia is there. Pax6 is missing, then aniridia means iris is absent and in case of Pax2 missing, it is renal coloboma. So, important genes should know this MXX1, these Hox genes you should know and these Pax genes out of these Pax9 is the most important one which is responsible for oligodontia. Now, we will be seeing supernumerary tooth. This is another disturbance in number of teeth. Till now, we were discussing anodontia. Okay. Now, we will be discussing additional tooth. Additional tooth. They are known, also known as supernumerary tooth. The condition is supernumerary tooth. Supernumerary tooth can be classified. They, they can be classified into four types. See, conical, tubercular, supplemental and odonto. Okay. So, conical, this mesiodens. You all know this mesiodens is a supernumerary tooth. This is peck shaped, peck shaped mesiodens. And this is a conical, conical type of supernumerary tooth. Okay. Tubercular, tubercular, supernumerary tooth means more than one cusp or tubercle are there, okay. And this is, example is central incisor, okay. Central incisor, palatal to central incisor, we have this supernumerary tooth, tubercle, tubercular. Now, next one is supplemental, 
supplemental most common is permanent maxillary lateral incisor you should know these examples examples of these types then is odontome now odontome we have two types odontome are hematomata structures okay and these are two types complex and compound complex and compound and this is very important the types of odontome and you should be able to differentiate which one is complex and which one is compound because compound compound odontome resembles a tooth okay so if any question in question it is written as a hematomata structure which resembles tooth then it is compound odontome and if it is a disorganized structure disorganized hematomata structure that is a complex odontome okay uh, compound becomes composite it comprises of more than one type of tissue okay so it uh, comprises of more than one type of tissue it is a hematomatous formation this is important thing about odontome that it is hematomatous and its two types complex and compound causes of supernumerary teeth see causes of supernumerary teeth they arise from third tooth bud okay and this one is very important dental lamina hyperactivity the hyperactivity of dental lamina can lead to formation of supernumerary tooth plus it also has hereditary tendency okay so incidence incidence is in primary in primary dentition the incidence is 0.8 percent and in permanent dentition this is 2.1 percent and if you go by male or female then it is more incidence is more in males than females okay most common supernumerary teeth most common supernumerary teeth these are mesiodens mesiodens followed by distromolars okay so this you should know the most common most common supernumerary teeth which are present in oral cavity these are mesiodens followed by distromolars and distromolar is what that is maxillary fourth molar okay it is the maxillary fourth molar paramolars are what similarly another term is their paramolar so you should be able to know differentiate like what is distro and what is para distro molar is the maxillary fourth molar it has erupted distal to the maxillary third molar now paramolar erupts buccal or lingual okay it will erupt either buccal or lingual to the maxillary molar now we will see some conditions which are associated with supernumerary teeth see first of all cleft lip and cleft palate 22.2 percent okay these conditions are associated with supernumerary teeth and uh, next one is cleidocranial dysplasia that is 22 percent associated with maxillary incisors and 5 percent for molars okay next one is gardner syndrome gardner syndrome has autosomal dominant inheritance okay so these are important conditions which are associated with supernumerary teeth now feature of Gardner syndrome. Gardner syndrome is a very important MCQ. Anything can be asked for this Gardner syndrome. So now we will see some features of Gardner syndrome. See Gardner syndrome. In this Gardner syndrome multiple polyposis of the large intestine is seen. This is a very important very prominent feature. Multiple polyposis of the large intestine seen in Gardner syndrome. Bone osteomas are present long bone skull and jaws okay bone osteomas are present for these bones long bone skull and jaws multiple epidermoid sebaceous cysts of skin are present on scalp and back okay desmoid tumors will be present and impacted supernumerary and permanent teeth are present so these are some of the important features of gardner syndromes which are which are asked in exam so you should know all these features Impacted supernumerary and permanent teeth are present there. Desmoid tumors may be present. Multiple epidermoid sebaceous cyst of skin, particularly scalp and back. Multi bone osteomas and multiple polyposis of the large intestine. These are the features of Gardner syndrome. Now we will be discussing some frequently asked questions. See, first of all, identify the supernumerary tooth present in the color plate. See, this is an x-ray film here. Now you can appreciate, you can appreciate a supernumerary tooth which is present. Here in the anterior region it is present, see, okay. So, what it can be? All the options, see here, one is paramolar, distromolar. So, these will be the, these will be the supernumerary tooth which can be seen in the posterior region. Mulberry molar is not a supernumerary, supernumerary teeth, okay. And this is a mesiodens. Now, out of these four options, mesiodens is the correct option as the supernumerary tooth we are able to see in the anterior region and rest two options are given these are of posterior region and this option d is not a supernumerary tooth now see the next question 
identify the supernumerary tooth present in the color plate now you can see the color plate it is of the posterior region molars are there okay so now see this is a supernumerary tooth which is visible here okay and uh, if you you can appreciate it from this picture that it is it is either buccal or lingual but absolutely it is not distal okay so when it is not in the distal position then it might be a paramolar okay so it is a paramolar see the options paramolar distromolar mesiodens it's not a mesiodens because mesiodens is there in the anterior region and mulberry molar is not a supernumerary tooth and it's not a distromolar because distromolar is what maxillary fourth molar now only one option is here paramolar it is erupting either buccal or lingual to the normal molar so this is a paramolar so correct option here is paramolar so now i have discussed some sample questions from this topic and you may expect many more questions from this topic image based questions like i have discussed here image based questions okay so prepare this topic well go through the synopsis again go through the video again if you want to read in detail you can refer textbooks like shafers and nevels and prepare this topic well you may expect many mcqs from this topic i hope this topic was clear enough but if you still have any queries you can comment in the comment sections below if you like this video like and share the video subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon if you want to receive future notifications for the upcoming videos thank you Thank you.